Oh man, where are my camera? All right, there we go. Sorry, it's all the mood lighting in this room here. So uh, I guess my son's got company later. So <coughs> I thought I would go ahead and uh, start a little series on this SR motor we're building here. A lot of guys want to know about what's going on with this, and uh, we got the Tomy uh, head gasket set here. And uh, we got all our gaskets for the uh, motor. Let me get all the socks and crap off this thing, and I'll show you a little bit about where we're at here. It's all taped up because he's going to paint it, but uh, this is the SR20 red top motor from Japan. Uh, this is the second one. The first one made about 400 to the wheel. Well, it made exactly 400 to the wheel and then kicked the rod out of the block. And uh, so we've upgraded a few things. Uh, we got a standalone computer this time so we can tune it a little better. We've got this new block. It's been decked and bored. Uh, we got some new cams. Uh, picked up all the coated bearings. Uh, got new thrust bearings for it this time. And then uh, ARP bolts, of course. Head studs, bolts and studs. And then this is the uh, the rods. The piston should be coming in here in the next uh, day or two. So once I get those, I'll, out. I'll make another video. This is hard to do with one hand. We'll, we'll pull it off. So here's the rods we went with this time. I'm gonna go a little beefer on the rods. So we got some manly H beams, the ARP bolts, and uh, these should you know make a little bit of power and not break. So we're trying to make it a little better than it was last time. And uh, it ran really good last time. Car ran you know low twelves. Probably would have run high eleven with some slicks on it. But he wants to race it with street tires, so. All right, well, anyway, there's his rods. We'll leave his stuff all messed up, so he'll be flipping out. Uh, we were running this turbo. This is a Turbonetics. Uh, it's a T04 with a T3 exhaust housing on it. Uh, this one's not a ball bearing. It's just a journal bearing turbo. This is one of my old turbos off one of my bug motors. Uh, I know that'll go 11 flat on a Volkswagen, you know, about the same size motor. Make around, you know, 450, 500 horsepower on his car probably. So, probably going to get this one rebuilt. There's nothing wrong with it. It's a Ray J. It's a really rugged unit. And uh, it's got a little bigger exhaust wheel on it. So, it should make a little more steam further up through the power band and uh, make more power. There's some, uh, oh, here's the upgraded header. This thing's pretty cool. Here's the uh, upgraded header. We're going to do the top mount this time. It's all TIG welded and a uh, really, really trick piece. Guy in Orlando made that for us. So we'll go out and I'll show you the cylinder head. I started working on that. Oh, here's the crankshaft. It's all been turned. I don't know if you can see that. It's ready to go. That's steel forged. Uh, pretty decent piece from the factory. But we just murdered the other one, so. So anyway, we'll go out here. He asked me if I would uh, work on his head for him. I got a lot of stuff going on myself, but you know, when they ask you, you got to sort of step up, I guess. Turn that air leak off. But anyway, here's his head. And I started doing the uh, bowl work and the exhaust ports. And we're going to put titanium valves and retainers on this. Have it surface one more time and I'm going to blend these combustion chambers out. You can see right here is the uh, the end of the head gasket. This is a flat part of the combustion chamber basically. So I'm going to lay this back and open these chambers up a little bit. And of course we'll polish everything when we get everything cut where we want it. We'll do a six angle valve job on here. You know, give it a good flow on the valve and radius these seats so they make a little more power. It really doesn't matter how good the head is of the turbo, you know, you just turn the boost up as long as the bottom end won't break. You can usually trick the cylinder head into thinking it's the best thing in the world. So I did a little bit of uh, blending on the uh, exhaust ports. I tried, I did the bottoms so far. And I'll flip the head over and do the top of the runners. 
but, uh, you know, after I get it all shaped, we'll go in there and we'll polish that like a mirror. Since this is a turbo car, we can have a fine polish on uh, both the intake and the exhaust and uh, not have a problem like if it was aspirated. You know, you want to have sort of a texture on the intake port on an aspirated setup so it atomizes the fuel. But with the turbo, it's pushing the fuel through the uh, port so fast that it really doesn't care. It seems to like it's slippery more than a uh, porous court. So that's where we're at with that. I just uh, a quick, you know, first video on that. Let you know we're working on it again. And he's still buying parts. He went and bought the pistons and stuff. And in Juku out there in uh, Claremont, they're sort of working with him. I gave him some really good deal on some of the parts and stuff. We're going to make some videos and uh, stuff like that. And if those guys need any port work or anything like that, you know, I told him I'd help him out with that kind of stuff too. So it gets him a little bit of a discount and uh, you know it'll be cool to have a little uh, sponsorship to do this project because it's pretty expensive you got to buy a lot of parts to make these actually live so the uh, that's another turbo that we killed there and uh, this was a this is a Japanese turbo built it back in plate and stuff but it just didn't hold up you know chunk chunk, chunk, chunk. too much boost not enough uh, bearing in that one here's the old uh, short block guy here you can't see shit i'm sure it's really dark i'll try to do a video of this tomorrow we got the uh all the pistons are in there one rod's you know mangled hanging outside the block uh this did the motor did have aluminum mounts on it and i told him that i would help him with this project and put all this back together again but he's got to get rid of the aluminum mounts i don't like the uh solid mounted motor to the frame i think that that harmonics translates and up into the engine bearings and stuff and uh can be hard on the motor these things have a lot of harmonics going through them at, you know 10,000 rpm and uh when you solid mount the motor in the car it just it, it causes problems because there's nowhere for all that energy to go to it just stays in the uh in the block so we're going to try to work on that try to make it a little uh smoother you know you put those solid mounts in the car and it sort of ruined the car it made it really uh like an on and off type deal so but uh all the valve springs are getting replaced new retainers new springs and new valves and uh this head was pretty flat we had it surfaced already once but i'll probably have them buzz it one more time after i uh shape the combustion chambers and stuff and uh just do a clean up pass on it and make sure that it hasn't lost its shape from the explosion so so that's where we're at we'll do the step by step on this i'll show you as i uh, progress on it we'll do a bow job on it that'll be interesting uh, that's a lot of seats <laughs> but uh it's how you make power with a small car you know you got a lot of valve area even though the valves are quite small if you added those together it'd be a substantial uh size valve and that's how they make power with these small engines you know four valves per cylinder and uh, it gives the port a lot of flow and a lot of velocity. So, easily make power with these things for sure. They are sort of uh, limited on the drivability because the shape of this combustion chamber is what causes them to be so on and offy. That's uh, why the Vortec head is so great and the LS is such a great motor. Everything they learn in the cylinder head makes it a lot better engine. All right, I'm going to shut this off, do a little more grinding. Not a lot going on out here. I've been working on that for him today. Just get my uh, tranny out of the box there and got the box broke down. We did that video for Cutworm. I don't think he saw it yet though. And uh, yeah, I didn't get much done on the Nova. So it's uh, getting harder and harder to work on that thing. I don't understand. I know I hate doing electronics, but it's getting ridiculous. I just got to come out and make a day and get on it. You know. I've been sort of weak the last couple of days from the little procedure they did. Anytime you get that spinal tap, it just takes it out of you for a day or two. Uh, nothing like hearing that pop. But uh, that's where we're at. I'm going to go ahead and finish up and uh, turn this off and uh, upload this video for you. Hope everybody's having a great day. I see Steve made it back home. 
not without incident. Of course, his truck got peppered with concrete and his windshield got broke. Go check that out. But uh, Steve has bad luck pretty much everywhere he goes. I've been watching his videos for a while and uh, I don't think he ever has a good trip. So, uh, till tomorrow, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, thanks for being a part of the channel. And uh, I did want to address one more thing. I had uh, one of my longtime subscribers ask me if he thought that you know he could tackle a transmission and uh i just wanted to tell you uh hell yeah i think you can you know i think with the power of youtube you can do anything you want as long as you're willing to uh click the mouse take the time to watch the videos you can do just about anything in this world that you want to do with the power of youtube uh you know, you've got people putting videos up, and if you run into a problem, all you got to do is make a video, and you know people will respond to you and help you out. So I think YouTube gives people the opportunity to not be a beginner when they do something for the first time. And I think that's the beauty of YouTube. Hopefully my videos help you guys learn a few little things. And uh, I appreciate the knowledge and the people that make videos on YouTube because without people creating content, and being willing to step in front of the camera and show you guys how to do things, we'd be a lot further behind. I mean, I know a lot of guys would still be working on their projects without YouTube. And uh, so when you asked me if you can do something on YouTube, I said anything's possible. As long as you're subscribed and you watch and you're active in the YouTube community, I think you can pull just about anything off that you want to. Don't let your fears stop you from, you know, doing what you want to do that's the only thing that's holding you back you guys have a good night push that record button make the best of it and uh be happy